Nate's still active and Nate's still awesome. I mean, Nate almost knocked out Leon Edwards in the fifth round of a crazy fight. I mean, he hurt him bad in that fifth round. Nate's still at the top of the food chain. Nate Diaz is a celebrity. He is a star. You know, I, I always speak to his ability to draw people in, calling them box office. Um, he's massive. Hey, I'm not surprised. <laughs> to get into the modern history of mixed style, which long ago exceeded the limits of universal popularity and worldwide spread, focusing on the aspect of spectacle, it is necessary for the new fighters to draw attention by conquering the championship of the world's best league. However, there are many performers in MMA that we can call legends and remember the best moments of their career with a smile. In today's video, we will remember the story of one of the toughest guys in the entire fighting industry, the best of the best, the Stocktonian gangster, Nate Diaz. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with four words and subscribe to the channel. Here we go! Childhood and early years. What is the game plan going out against him? The game plan is you go in there, hit him with some good shit, don't get hit, and uh, come home with a pocket full of cash. Nathan Donald Diaz was born on April the 16th of 1985 in the rough city of Stockton, California. The nationality of our hero is rather mixed. His mother is ethnic Brit, while his father is Mexican. By the way, speaking about Father Robert, you might as well forget about him as he left the family way before the boy went to school. As it is usually the case, due to the circumstances, all of the burden of raising kids was put on the mother, Melissa Brown. And Nate, as you already figured out, wasn't the only child in the family. He has an older brother, Nick, and younger sister, Nina. As a result, a poor but responsible woman had to work numerous jobs simply to feed her kids. Speaking about the guy's free time in his childhood, things are quite obvious. Nate was taking his first steps in Stockton, not the most open city in the United States, which, as you can guess, directly affected his daily routine and behavior in general. The kid's mentors were the streets and his brother Nick. People come up to me and try to shake my hand and smile at me and they try to wish me good luck. Why are you going to have good luck for, you know, I mean, why are you going to say, like, good luck to me? I'm going to come, you know, and uh, I try to wreck you tomorrow, you know, and then you're going to do me and it's just not. I don't want you to have good luck, dude, you know? Who's the better fighter between you guys? That's a stupid question, dude. It is yeah, we're both different fighters. We're different weights, you know? It's my brother. I mean, like, like who would... Who would win? It's like, okay, why, like, or what? Like, that's, that's stupid, you know? You're gonna ask me that? Nate got introduced to sports quite early. Thanks to his brother Nick being interested in martial arts, Diaz Jr. also had to attend various workouts and exercise. Initially, he did it for the sake of getting the kid out of a bad environment and teaching him to put in work, which will eventually deliver its fruits. On top of that, the boy was often treated with food for the mere fact that he stuck to the schedule, attended gym, and trained on a daily basis. When the family was starving, who is going to pass on a burrito for which you just need to train for a couple of hours that will only make you better? Nate thought the same thing during his childhood. For his entire conscious boyhood, the guy tried to be like Nick, not being inferior in any department. One could say that thanks to him, he figured out that he wants to dedicate his future life to martial arts. His favorite sport happened to be Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which he started doing at the age of 11. Three years later, the teenager followed his brother to the sports camp of the town of Lodi, where he studied in the Tokei school. At a new place, the guys started to complement their arsenal with boxing skills under the supervision of Richard Perez. And here is the interesting fact, Around the same time, due to the influence of Eastern philosophy, Nate stopped eating meat or any other animal product, becoming a vegetarian. He's my brother, I'm competitive with him as well. Like, if he runs fast, I'm trying to run just as fast, so uh, it's motivating. I like that answer better than that whole beat around the bush one in the first. Is that better? Mixed martial arts. <laughs> I'm on the poster now. That's why. 
So after blending jiu-jitsu with the first boxing workouts, Nate Diaz took the path of becoming an MMA fighter. By the time he was taking the first steps of reaching a decent level and starting to compete, his older brother Nick was already performing on the professional scene. Older Diaz's career began in August of 2001 in the local and small promotions where he began to earn his first victories alternating with losses. By the moment Nate joined him, so to say, Nick had time to test himself in multiple weight classes, conquer the local state title, debut in the WEC organization and even become its champion. On top of that, before Diaz Jr. figured out what it feels like to go out, fight and get paid for that, his brother managed to break into the UFC and not just debut but also earn a couple of big wins including the biggest one against Robbie Lawler. It was the first time I ever saw Nick talk shit. It was the first fight with Robbie Lawler. Robbie was dangerous. So Very Nick, dangerous. Nick took that shit talking to DEFCON 5 and he got <laughs> into the octagon. And the first thing he does, he gets into the octagon. He looks over at Robbie and goes, Stockton, motherfucker, Stockton. And he starts walking around, Stockton, mother... And Robbie's like, what the f*** are you talking yeah, about? And for the bonus, before getting to the next chapter, we will overview a very old fight of a 17-year-old Nate Diaz back in 2002. Many people have already seen this footage, but we must show it anyway. There you can see how a young Stocktonian beat Robert Limon with an arm submission at around a minute from the start. And now, let's get to the interesting stuff. <laughs> Professional sport. You're in this sport for it, because that's what I'm in it for to let. That's what I was in it from the beginning for to let everybody know that I'm the baddest dude there is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, and I'm the baddest. There he is, you, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you told me to say it. They, he told me you could cuss on television. After making a decision to become an MMA fighter and investing a great amount of effort, time, drive, and commitment, Nate Diaz had his debut on the professional scene. It took place in October of 2004. By the way, at that time, Nick's record was 9 and 3, while Diaz's junior opponent happened to be Alejandro Garcia. We won't beat around the bush for too long and say that our hero earned his victory in this fight via a triangle closer to the middle of the third round. Nate had a great performance on the ground and managed to find the key to beat his opponent. We also have to mention that this was a lightweight bout. It's important to know because Diaz had his next fight at welterweight. His opponent was Koji Oishi. Interesting observation, two months before this fight, the Japanese had time to compete against the older Diaz at UFC 53 and lose by a first round knockout. Unfortunately for Diaz Jr., his experience with Oishi in the ring wasn't as bright like at all. He was losing to his vis-a-vis -vis in every department, eating shots in the span of all 15 minutes. In the end, Nate's second professional fight resulted in a unanimous decision loss. After returning to the lightweight division, our hero tried himself in strike force at the event that took place on March the 10th of 2006. His opponent was Tony Juarez. This time, the Stocktonian's opponent was a lot less lucky. Diaz had a proper approach to preparation, coming from the past mistakes and thanks to his skills on the ground, he managed to drown Juarez in a half a round. The rest was a matter of technique, finish him on the ground and win via TKO and that's exactly what Nate did. The next appearance of our hero in the octagon happened at WEC 20 on May the 5th of the same year, he shared the cage with the Brazilian Gilbert Real. Overall, this guy had the same fate as the previous opponent of the Stocktonian Gangster. A masterful display of BJJ skills mixed with striking technique quickly led to Nate getting the upper hand while Gilbert lost via TKO in the first round. Yeah, I just felt like once it started I had better technique than him on the ground. Just kind of started going my way. That was tough though, he's strong. Held in there, he didn't give up, the ref had to stop it. So right on to the guy. Just a month later, a young prospect with a recognizable last name in the industry returned for his fourth victory on record. On June the 15th, he faced Joe Hurley. A blonde guy in camo shorts couldn't offer Diaz anything worthy, meaning the work on the ground, which led to his defeat via triangle in the beginning of the second round. He knows what I, should, I know I should do. He's my training partner. 
If he thought I should do something, he'd tell me specifically, but he didn't really. He just trained hard. He says, go beat that mother ass. Don't be a bitch. There you go. Goodness. Nice job. After that, Nate Diaz performed in August at World Cup 1, where he conquered the lightweight championship. However, we couldn't find the footage of this fight on the internet. It's a shame because it was a fight against Dennis Davis which ended in the first round, but what is more interesting is that it took place in our hero's hometown, Stockton. Either way, the prospect quickly moved on. Two months later, on October the 12th, WEC offered Nate a title shot. At the 24th tournament, he went up against Hermes Franca. The initial game plan of Diaz Jr. wasn't really different from what he demonstrated in the past. And overall, throughout the fight, the guy had all the chances for an impressive victory, but the problem was that the Brazilian fighter wasn't a novice in jiu-jitsu, which played a crucial role in this rivalry. Already in the middle of the second round, Franca managed to catch Nate with a tight armbar and make him surrender for the first and only time in his professional career. As you can see, this was the moment when a wondering of Stockton's impudent son about different promotions came to its end. Path to the UFC Brother, he motivates me a lot. He got me going. He, he's the one who got me started. He said, you better go whip some motherfuckers ass. <laughs> Despite the loss in the last fight, Diaz's surname was already drawing some attention in the fighting community, which allowed our hero to participate in the fifth season of the Ultimate Fighter Show. We won't talk too much on this topic and just say that this season happened to be one of the most entertaining ones in UFC history. Thanks to the conflicting and provoking behavior of Nate, history remembers a lot of funny moments. God, it's not funny. Get mad and try to fight me, please. That's what I was hoping for. <laughs> Speaking about the actual performances, they were more than successful for Diaz Jr. The prospect went through everybody on his way with ease, and on June the 23rd of 2007, he stopped Manny Gamburian via TKO, earning the victory in the finale and becoming a winner of the show. Nate, congratulations. On behalf of the UFC, uh, you are the lightweight ultimate fighter. You get the six-figure contract with the UFC. Getting on the roster of the world's best league, Nate Diaz started his preparation for a debut. On September the 19th of 2007, he faced Junior Asuncao. You gotta give me a title shot one day, and in order to do that, I gotta get some wins, and it starts right here. The official debut performance of the future star in the promotion went in the best way possible. In literally less than a round, Nate did his job and made the Brazilian surrender with a guillotine. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of good jiu-jitsu training partners, so we get in scrambles, and uh, like I said, I'm not afraid to be in scrambles, so it worked out good for me. The 10th professional bout of Stockton's impudent son took place in January of 2008. At fight night 12, our hero went up against Alvin Robinson. It's just the beginning. Now I got plenty more competitors to deal with. I take out Alvin Robinson and then whoever comes next. And again, at an earlier stage of Diaz's career, we witnessed more work on the ground, which didn't play in the hands of the Stocktonian's opponents, because the American fighter lasted for only 3 minutes and 39 seconds before he lost a via triangle submission. Yeah, we got that finished first round again. It made me feel good. Feel real good. Motivated by the submission of the night bonus, Nate Diaz fought Kurt Pellegrino in April. I feel like I match up good with Kurt. I train with guys just like him, with wrestlers, uh, jiu-jitsu guys, boxing. Uh, I've worked it all, man. I'm, I'm ready to go, so you better be ready for me. By the way, we did not mention the submission of the night bonus for nothing, as in this fight, Diaz got the same award and again by executing a triangle, but this time it was a lot more exciting as the prospect began to celebrate before the American even surrendered. A great performance from a young fighter. I feel great, you know, I know I could do it because I train with top fighters like Nick Diaz, Jake Shields, Gilbert Melendez, and uh, you know, I just, I just want people to know, like sometimes people think the ultimate fighters are sheltered. Not me, I'm looking for no sheltering. A year later, after winning at Tough and UFC debut, Nate Diaz entered the main octagon to face the US representative with a record of 24 and 6, Josh Nia. Even though by that time Nia had only one bout inside the UFC, he had a rather big experience, hence a vast arsenal. The guy showed a rather vivid fight that went the distance to a split decision. 
In the end, on that night, the win was given to our hero, who performed more efficiently than Josh. Yeah, hey man, Josh Near, he ain't no black belt in jiu-jitsu like the other guy that been fighting. These yeah, this dude right here could fight, man. Go ahead, talk. Get him off me, man, come on. Nah, it's on you, what are you gonna say? Come on, you gotta be quick, think of something. I don't like Nick Diaz. Why don't you like Nick Diaz? He's a dick. What, what do you gotta say about him? He's a crazy mother. He's a crazy mother. You think you beat his ass? Come on. No. <laughs> the first true breakthrough tournament for Nate happened to be at UFC 94 on January the 31st of 2009, where a young and promising talent with a five-fight winning streak clashed with Clay Guida. I don't know, some people say we come off as cocky or something, but I don't. I think I'm the least cocky. Like, I, I, I see a lot of guys talk about their fights. They're like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to beat this guy's ass. I'm going to knock him out. But I never say stuff like that. You know, it's kind of bad karma. I might turn around and bite you in your ass. So I just try to try to go out there and do my best, and hopefully, I, I, you know, I come out the winner or whatever. So at that, that's what I consider a misconception. We'll give you a little spoiler. These guys delivered a great fight of the night that pleased everybody at the arena. However, it didn't end in favor of the Stocktonian. A split decision led to Nate's first defeat in the world's best league. The next fight on the professional journey of Diaz happened to be against the American Joe Stevenson, who challenged him on June the 20th. From my last fight, you know, and uh, uh, stuff I already should have knew, but. Uh, just a little stuff that probably people can't even understand unless you fight. But uh, just from losing that fight, yeah, it pissed me off and uh, it makes me just want to go out there and, you know, keep going towards the top of the division. Even though Stevenson was already at the final stage of his career with almost 40 pro fights, his experience happened to be enough to drag the Stocktonian to the ground, which young Nate couldn't escape throughout the given 15 minutes. In the end, Diaz suffered a second loss in a row, this time via unanimous decision. Our hero didn't like that and he wanted to bounce back as soon as possible. Returning in the octagon three months later, he went up against Melvin Gillard in the main event of September's fight night. I definitely want to finish this fight. As soon as the bell rings, man, it's time to go. I'm glad to finally find a guy who's going to fight me. I'd be happy to give the fans a gift. The show was truly spectacular. It was one of the rare cases with Nate where he demonstrated his future signature style. By showing his ability to take damage, the Stocktonian managed to readjust already by the middle of the second round and choked his opponent out with a guillotine, earning another submission of the night bonus. Yeah, man, I can make 55 for the rest of my life. I just gotta keep doing what I do. And, um, cause I, you know, I used to even get bigger than I do now, but, um, yeah, I, I'm probably go up eventually just for fun and go back, jump around, you know, just see what, see what other kind of things I could take on. But yeah, I can make, I can make 155. Getting back in the win column, Diaz got a future title contender as an opponent in the face of Gray Maynard, whom he fought in the main event of a fight night in January. Just to remind you, these two already faced each other at the Ultimate Fighter, and back then, the Stocktonian Gangster won via a first round submission. Uh, man, yeah, get Gray, like, uh, he, he, he was uh, on the show. He's a little bit green when he was on the show. I came to realize that um, he had been in the sport a little bit less than a lot of the guys on the show. So, and he's been improving, and his fights have been, uh, he's been winning fights and doing better as time went by. So I'm sure he's he's pretty confident thinking about how how he got got better and figuring out some kind of uh, game plan like he figures in his head how he's gonna beat me. But you know at the at the same time, uh, I was already a little bit ahead of him uh, technically in, in MMA then in fighting and everything. And uh, as he's been getting better, I've been getting better too. You know, <laughs> and my training partners have and my whole team. So. Uh, he could have all the confidence he wants about how good he's been doing, but uh, I've been improving also. He like to play like he's undefeated this whole time and, you know, avoid me and avoid the situation, but I know when the UFC asked me if he wanted to fight me, he didn't want to fight me. The only loss of Maynard against Stockton's impudent son has not been sitting well with him since the fifth season of Tough. He's been waiting for this rematch more than a title shot, and when he got such an opportunity, he did everything in his power to deliver. 
and his power was enough to beat Nate via split decision, which set the grounds for the future, but let's not get too far ahead. A controversial defeat in the fight with Maynard motivated Nate to move up to the welterweight division. In March of 2010 at UFC 111, he shared the cage with Rory Markham. My name is Nathan Diaz, uh, I fight MMA, I, I train at Caesar Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy with my brother Nick and uh, Jake Shields, Gilbert Melendez. Nate Diaz managed to make some waves as a welterweight more than successfully. He quickly snatched the victory by stopping his opponent via TKO in the middle of the first round. Sure, he didn't get the bonus, but the Stocktonian still got some extra money as Markham missed weight prior to the fight. I don't like that guy. That was Kurt Pellegrino. Yeah, Fight? Nah, yeah, know? I did win that fight. Only people who thought I lost that fight were the judges, but who, who's that? Yeah. Who were the judges? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I thought I did. I didn't get one person saying that he did. And uh, I didn't feel like, if I, if I lost a fight, you know, how did he win the fight? That's more of the question. Maybe I didn't do enough, but he didn't do sh <laughs> Five months later, at UFC 118, our hero got Marcus Davis as an opponent. In the fight with a renowned veteran, Diaz delivered a spectacular and bloody performance which lasted till the very end of the third round. After beating the hell out of the American, Nate dragged him to the very bottom and choked him out unconscious. Great performance. All these guys are on steroids, so can't be surprised when somebody pops up on steroids, you know. It usually should be a surprise when people will are on steroids. In January of 2011, in the same welterweight division, Nate Diaz faced the South Korean Dong Hoon Kim at UFC 125. Hard to fight people that nobody knows. A lot of time, because a lot of time those guys nobody knows are better than the guys that people know, you know. So it's like that they're trying to make they're trying to make a big name off of you. So I'm what I'm saying is I would like to fight somebody with a huge name, somebody who everybody thinks a lot of, because I think a lot of them too. And, Despite a rather good start at a new weight class, the third round fight resulted in another defeat for our hero by a unanimous decision. Kim was more active and skillful on that night, for which he got a deserved victory on his resume. The next opponent in the Stocktonian's way was the future Hall of Famer from Canada, Rory McDonald. They met at UFC 129. I feel good, I train hard with my team, uh, Nick. Uh, Jake, Gil, uh, Daniel, everybody had title fights, so I got a lot of good training. And um, tomorrow, Saturday, re be ready to go. By the way, the prospect who at that time was one of the three youngest fighters in the organization's history, managed to sway the judges' attention on his side and outpoint Diaz, which subsequently earned him a unanimous decision victory on that night. After that fight, the Stocktonian decided to return back to the lightweight division to go after the best representatives of the top five with renewed vigor. In September of 2011 at UFC 135, he shared the cage with the Japanese Takanori Gomi. Another submission of the night bonus did not take too long. Nate outstruck his opponent in just one incomplete round and made him tap with a tight armbar. I don't know, I made weight pretty easy for 55. Well, I think I went up to 170. I was kind of irritated at losing at 55. Like, I thought I beat Graham Maynard. So, I was like, if I'm going to bust my ass all year long, fight three to five times a year, and get, uh, excuse me, and uh, get jacked out of the decisions, then. I might as well be fighting all year and uh, not have to diet because that's pretty miserable, you know? So I like, if I'm going to get jacked for a decision, it's going to be eating and ha a little happier during the year. An impressive victory over a Japanese fighter after returning to the lightweight division made the matchmakers put him against Donald Cerrone. Those who followed MMA at that period of time know good and well that Cowboy of the Past was a truly tough challenge not everyone could pass. So because of that, he was the favorite in the eyes of the fans. I've been following Nate and his brother for a long time. Those two come to fight. They're game opponents. No matter who, no matter what, they throw down. And uh, 
Come Friday, he will show up. I know that without doubt in my mind, he will come to fight, and it's going to be very exciting. He's technical, and uh, he he's got he's got some good good things that he does. But uh, I train with guys that do the same thing, you know. And um, there's nothing I haven't seen before. But we're gonna have to find out what happens on Friday night. It's happening, man. Friday, it's on. You know, that's all it was. I just went up to. Uh, I never met the kid. I wanted to shake his hand. You know, I understand where he comes from. He doesn't want to be friends. He doesn't want to have any kind of interaction with any guys he fights. And that's just how he approaches different fights. At the time, I didn't realize that. You know, I went up to shake his hand. Hey, man, nice to meet you. I've been following you for a while. So, uh, like I said, words were exchanged. The fight signed. And Friday, we're going to dance. I think uh, in the lightweight division, I can fight the top, top contenders. So, that's where I'm going to stay for a while. Nate's provoking behavior outside of the cage wasn't enough to phase such a professional like Cerrone. So Stockton's impudent son decided to top up his trash talk with some punches in the actual octagon. But what was more shocking for the public is how easily and pridefully he dismantled such a formidable rival. In the end, Nate Diaz beat Cowboy up and scored a spectacular victory by a unanimous decision. After fights, I, like, I'll be home and probably, I'll probably take the ball on the day off, the day after off, but I'm going to get back to work. I'm always trying to improve everywhere. So whether I'm standing or on the ground, I just try to be, re be ready for whatever's going to happen, you know, because anything can happen. And then I, I was even thinking maybe with all the stuff he was telling him about how he's going to knock me down and knock me out and kick me and all this, I thought that I know they train with great Jacksons and they have a real smart game plan to come out and take you out of your den. So I was teaching maybe they even try to take me down. So I just try to stay ready for everything that uh, work, work is, is hard as I can. The next check on our hero's list of victims happened to be the American Jim Miller, who, by the way, still competes in the UFC at the age of 40. However, at that time, he was recognized as one of the best representatives of the weight class, who became famous thanks to his ground game. On paper, it was another bad matchup for Diaz, as Miller was seen as the favorite, as was the case in the fight with Cerrone. The set fight headlined at UFC on Fox 3 on May the 5th of 2012. I know I train harder than anybody in the UFC, so the mission at hand right now is Jim Miller, and I'm here to complete it, you know, take him out. Despite many people's expectations, a young gangster from Stockton pulled off another huge upset. He outworked the prime American and was better than him on many levels. Already by the fourth minute of the second round, Nate beat all the crap out of his opponent's head and forced him to shoot for the legs. A timely guillotine did its job and Diaz became the first man to finish Jim Miller. I'll fight whoever wants to fight, whoever they want me to fight. I just want a couple minutes, you know what I'm saying? I want to sit down and I don't even want to talk about a fight for a few weeks. Time, but building up to a fight maybe. You know, tra training and sitting there thinking, maybe you'll get like uh, adrenaline rush, little little nerves kicking in. But usually, by the time a fight a fight comes, you know, I, I try to get that all out of the way in training. You know, and uh, I don't think there's time to be nervous at that point. Come fight day, come fight fight time. You know, I think uh, I think you should probably get most of that out of the way in training. You know. Suddenly, Nate Diaz got his shot for the lightweight championship. Two big victories over the best representatives of the division put him against Benson Henderson, whom the Stocktonian faced in December of 2012. It means a lot to me. Every fight means a lot to me. I, I always want to win. I always prepare to win. And um, like I said, this, this is the one that puts the, puts the light on my, my camp and my boys. And, Training partners, I got, I got broke, broke training partners, broke friends that fight, and they, they're doing the. I'm just trying to help them get their money on because they got talent. They just need to, they just need to, you know, a little push. And even being a top contender, my push ain't helping. When we talk about Nate's story in hindsight, we can't beat around the bush for too long, as many of you are already familiar with it. Yes, the Stocktonian gangster didn't conquer the UFC championship losing to Henderson via unanimous decision in the conclusion of the five rounds. I didn't perform how I wish I could have. Uh, I got a punch in the eye pretty early in the fight and things were blurry. They never came back. 
like waiting for it to uh, recover. And uh, <clears throat> when it did, I was going to come back strong, but it never did, so. In April of 2013, Diaz entered the cage to bounce back and return to the winning path. At another UFC on Fox event, he clashed with a very dangerous lightweight of that time, Josh Thompson. I think he's been around a long time. He's a veteran and um, he's in the UFC, top the division before they lost the division. And um, <clears throat> strike force champ, fought my boy, who's the toughest guy out here, and uh, had three tough fights with him. So he's definitely going to be a. Let's put it like this. This performance happened to be one of, if not the best in the career of the Aka fighter, as he became the only one to beat the Stocktonian via stoppage, namely TKO. The first guy to ever finish Nate Diaz in the UFC, was that something you were shooting for? I wasn't really looking to finish him, but the opportunity presented itself, which it did. Yeah, Nate Diaz's entire career in the UFC was full of such swings, at least for the bigger part. After his loss to Thompson, matchmakers offered our hero to have a trilogy with Gray Maynard on November's card. It was a perfect opportunity for the Stocktonian, first of all, to prove to everybody, including his opponent, that he should have gotten the victory in the last fight, and secondly, that it's not so easy to get rid of Diaz. I'm gonna beat Gray Maynard. This is the third time fighting him. Finish it off and uh, seal the deal. You could ask him how he won the fight. I bet you don't got too good of an answer. I'm gonna be in his face, I'm gonna let him know that I'm there to win and he's gonna know. Just two words would be enough to describe this clash. Knockout of the night. A signature striking technique of Stockton's impudent son completely drained Maynard already by the middle of the first round. Thus, Diaz effortlessly closed a rivalry with Gray in his favor. Yeah, the top, top 10 guys, so it was just got the job done quick and that was, uh, that was the objective uh well the, to get the job done so i i don't know i guess i was going to watch and see what happened soon after this victory the stocktonian took a break for 13 months after which he faced the tough brazilian rafael dos anjos the bout with whom he was supposed to give them a title shot against showtime I can tell that Dos Anjos, he's got the tools to do that thing. If you don't be careful, you're gonna get knocked out. And uh, I have seen him improve his his uh, his fights uh, before. I think he was a little a little newer in the game, and I think he he learned a lot and got better with each fight. I, I watched the, uh, every fight from the Clay Guida fight, and uh, I think he's got way better every fight. So I think. Uh, it's going to definitely be a tough, tough fight and he's a, he's a good opponent that I'm going to have to deal with. As history taught us, Diaz did not come into this fight in his best condition. It's worth adding that he missed weight which did not speak in his favor. In the cage, he clearly couldn't show his best and lost to the Brazilian via unanimous decision. I came here to fight, I uh, came here to win but I ran into some, some uh, some uh, issues in camp, and uh, I uh, I wish I could have fought. I wish I could have won, but I just I, I did what I could do the next time to get to get by. But I felt like I wasn't in shape, and uh, I just I had to come in. I had to get paid, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, man, I like I said, I had some issues in camp. I was injured. I was injured out. I didn't get the training. I didn't get the uh, the type of shape I could be in for this, I wish I had been because it was a good, good, good guy. Quite expectedly, after seeing the fighter in such a bad light, the public began writing him off. Subsequently, Diaz took a break for another year, coming back only in October of 2015. Nate's opponent was Michael Johnson, and as many people were saying at that time, it was a nightmare matchup for a declining Stocktonian. But let's be honest, stylistically, this was still intriguing for the fans and a subsequent brawl backstage only added fuel to the fire, increasing the overall anticipation. Training hard and ninja, his ass up, everybody, everybody. That's the key to beating everybody. Great Martial to see artists, you. Ninja, real shit. Not no funny fake. Let's fight. This will be good for the sport. The, the sport. This is fight shit. Ninja shit. That's what, that's what people want to see. What I want to see when I watch 
So let's see some real shit. Absolutely. He's a Diaz brother. You know, yeah. they, they come in tough. They come in ready to fight regardless of their situation, regardless of how much work they put in the gym. He's going to come in and fight. And I don't think that loss really affects who he is now and who he once was. You know, um, he's still one of the best guys in the division. He always will be. But being that said, he was here. It was his time long ago. Now it's my time, and I'm going to come in and dominate. Sorry. Final thing. Uh, why back at 155 and not 170? Um... It's just the damn way things worked out, you know. And they gave me they, they, they give me a list of names. I won seventy, and it was like never heard of any of them. Uh, my, Michael Johnson's ranked number five. Uh, he's a better option. Better option. Than the Final others. thing: How are you going to react when he starts talking smack to you, egging you on, and things like that? Right, you like here, that? that? Right there, that smile right there. Yeah, that uh, that motivates me. You know, if he's doing that, then I know he's not focused on the fight. He's focused on talking trash and getting in my head, and that means he's losing once he starts doing that. So that means a job well done for me. As you can see, since we're talking about this fight in more detail than the previous ones, you would think that the fighters had a back and forth action prior to the actual bout. And you would be right. With just a few days left for the set date, Diaz's and Johnson's teams crossed paths in the hotel and made some noise to say the least. After things settled down, Michael gave a couple of comments on this matter where he disclosed some details and straight up said what he was going to do to the Stocktonian. You know, I'm walking kind of minding my own business. I just want to stare at him to really like see what he's thinking and really see how he's acting towards me. And uh, of course, you know, I walked by him. He was by one guy. He didn't say anything. He didn't run his mouth. I come back out and then he's with six other people. So now the real tough guy talk comes on and he just starts running his mouth, asking me what I'm looking at, you know, of course I come back, tell him I'm looking at you, you know, like what the thing, like, like what are you gonna do about it? You know, so he gets real tough, he calls me a bitch, does this, does that, and then um he waits till a lot of people gets around before he pushes me. Which is really funny to me. So, you know, we both went our separate ways, you know, he kinda ran off and started flipping me off, but uh, there's no time for all that, you know, tomorrow we're gonna fight, tomorrow we're gonna see who the real tough guy is, so. If we take into consideration Johnson's words, it's scary to imagine what would have happened to him if Diaz's so-called goons got into the octagon. Because in the end, he beat Johnson up himself, teaching a proper three-round lesson on striking mastery. Despite all expectations and speculations, a one-sided beatdown resulted in Nate's convincing victory by a unanimous decision. And you already know what happened next. Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I work for, mother I'm going to fight your You know what's the real fight, what's the real money fight is me. Um, you know, it was an incredible experience. First off, you know, Nate's an incredible fighter. And, um, you know, we went on there and gave you guys exactly what everybody wanted. And that was a fight of the night performance. But um, you really don't know how you're going to react until he starts doing it. And, you know, he's me in. So, you know, congrats to him. Uh, I felt like I was okay the whole fight. Then the last, like, uh, minute, something happened where I got hit right here and my eye got blurred. So I switched this way for a second. So it's a little weird thing, but nothing, nothing that. By calling out not the champion or a legitimate number one contender, but the notorious Irishman who just recently conquered the featherweight championship, the Stocktonian made some waves because his speech was sincere, vicious and assertive, which couldn't help but make an impression on the fans. But nobody really took the fight between McGregor and Diaz seriously. The Irishman was only getting more fame. With the help of that, he skipped the line in front of the top fighters in the lightweight division and aimed at another championship. By that time, Notorious was yet to taste defeat inside the UFC, had a streak of 15 victories and overall looked untouchable after his most recent win over the King of Rio. As for Diaz, he got tired of kicking rocks and fighting absolute no-names as he called them. Time was running out. While his career wasn't that successful and juicy, so the fighter from the tough streets of Stockton started to bully the most popular fighter in the promotion. It's unbelievable, but fate smiled at Nate and did everything so that the year of 2016 became a truly breaking point in Diaz's life. Thanks to a successful combination of circumstances, as Dos Anjos injured his leg and pulled out of the fight against Connor with only two weeks left to the set date, 
there was a question of who was going to fight McGregor. Because the notorious Irishman did not want to pull out of the tournament. And then Nate got a call from the UFC that split his life to before and after. March 5th, UFC 196. I like, I like his fight style a lot better than a lot of people's fight style. The fight, the fight games we got really weak in the last long time. So, uh, so uh, I guess I could say that I appreciate somebody who will come and fight. He even tried to pick on John Anik the other day. He has a bully mentality until a, until a real man shows up. Like Mike Tyson said, he's scared of a real John man. John Anik. Uh, Nate, how much are you going to make? I make a lot. A lot more than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, a lot more than this last one, that is. He can thank me for that one. I've made more millionaires in this game than anybody else. He's, he's, like, a, he's like a little cholo gangster from the hood. But at the same time, but at the same time, he coaches kids to jiu on a Sunday morning and goes on bike rides with the elderly. He makes gun signs with the right hand and animal balloons with the left hand. So, I, 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 I'm a, you're a credit to the community. Fuck you. you. Fuck you. I don't give a f what you say, motherfucker. Yeah, thugging on mine, motherfucker. What you got? They're all on steroids. The only steroids. weight I care about. They're all on steroids. The only weight I care Everybody. about. Steroids? I'm talking about steroids. I'm talking about putting my name in steroids. I'm major against that. Don't put my name in the name of steroids, mate. Hey, I'm not on no steroids. What, you, what the f are you talking about? Your two teammates were on steroids. That's your two boys, the scrap pack. Remember that? Well, I'm damn, they were. Did you know they were taking that stuff? Did you know they were taking that stuff? Did you? You're on steroids. I'm going to talk about money because we are the business network and the, the business of the Woo! UFC and all that I'll sort of stuff. I'll take over from here, Nate. You can bounce. <laughs> take, take a coffee break, Nate. And by coffee break, I mean bring no. me my coffee. No. They want you to give us a quick count to ten, both of you gentlemen, if you don't mind. Just if you wouldn't mind counting to ten. Nate can only count to five. <laughs> ten. Oh. Oh, you broke <laughs> I get buy and I could buy and sell you 100 times over. Hey, I'm, I'm here to kill or be killed in Stockton, California. F this little bitch. F you. Nate Diaz, ladies and gentlemen. It's another day for me. One pulls out, another one steps in. I'm used to it. I was just giggling at his little soft body. I, I, I've never seen a skinny guy. How can a fat guy be so skinny at the same time? I've never. It's, it amuses me, but um, I'm looking forward to going in there. Put the martial arts back into the game. Just like that, in just two weeks, the chemistry between these guys was so potent that the event made 1,317,000 PPV buys. For 14 days, the entire fighting community was holding its breath prior to such an exciting fight. But anticipation is something that comes and goes. But what happened inside the octagon on that day is already history. And the story was that Stockton's impudent son pulled off one of the biggest upsets in mixed martial arts. After courageously weathering the storm from the Irishman in the first round, he broke the tide of the fight and stopped McGregor via submission, which automatically made him a superstar in the UFC and the whole fighting world. Hey, I'm not surprised, mother... <laughs> I took the chance going, going at 170, but Nate came in. He was a. Uh, I felt it took him the fourth round, but I, I was inefficient with my energy. But I'm humble in victory or defeat. And um, I respect Nate. He came in. Yeah, he took the fight on short and I was came in at 170 and, and done the job. He he was efficient. I wasn't efficient. That was that was it. I feel. When the next round started, it came quicker than I thought. And when I started landing shots, I was like, "This is a wrap because you ain't going no farther than this." <laughs> yes, I could tell right. by the landed punches, and uh, and uh, how his punches started. Started, I started smothering his punches and they started easing up and I was like and then I had him on the cage and I was like you don't have to say now do you and uh and then I put a knee in his stomach and I heard him go huh and I was like yeah this is good this is good. and then all of a sudden he's shooting yeah. he's shooting for a take yeah. and I was like oh you're a wrestler now. <laughs> you're a wrestler I remember I'm the black belt in jiu-jitsu and you're shooting on me now so you and me and you know that Big this mistake. is a wrap this is a wrap I'm at the top, so it's their call what's next. We'll see what happens. Long awaited success. Dominated by larger than life personalities, Nate Diaz stands out as a true original.
Since making his debut on the fifth season of The Ultimate Fighter, Nate Diaz has fought a who's who of the UFC roster, including Rafael Dos Anjos, Donald Cerrone, and Rory McDonald. But it was his short notice win over featherweight champion Conor McGregor in March that solidified the Stockton product as a star. Exactly like that. A long-awaited success came to our hero only after he beat the biggest star and the most popular representative of the world's best league. Only after this event, Nate came out of the shadow of his older brother, managing to deliver something on his own. Of course, considering that it was a short notice fight and such a successful one, the main MMA promotion already knew that they were going to make a rematch between these guys. They didn't need to tell McGregor twice, for him it was a matter of principle. And the Stocktonian was not a fool to lose such an opportunity. Already, after the first fight with Notorious, the brand of Diaz gained value and became independent, not to mention a wild demand. And the rematch was about to only increase all of these benefits many times more and once again draw the attention of the crowd to the world's best league. The news about the second fight was so present in the media that the UFC wanted to schedule this fight for the UFC 200 event. There even was a press conference with other fighters on the card, which the Irishman didn't attend. I'm to fight Conor McGregor and uh, I don't really have any too much interest in anybody else. I don't have any interest in fighting at all. But uh, if that's what we were going to do, I thought we were going to do it. However, due to some issues behind the scenes, the fight was rescheduled for UFC 202. Yeah, it's good to be back here in Vegas to check out the T-Mobile Arena. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I feel the last contest was a great fight. I have my reasons why I feel the fight went the way it went. And now I have an opportunity to prove what I am saying. Like I've proved many times before that what I say is correct. So. I look forward to August 20th where I will come in correct, prepared, sharp, and I will take this man out. Well, I didn't even want to fight him again. He wanted to fight me and they wanted to fight, and uh, I didn't want enough, I don't want to fight at all. Because I was already just fought. They called me three days later, like I said, they never turned off. I was like, okay, I guess I'm fighting again. And then we go, we go there, and I'm sitting there thinking the whole time, like, why am I getting thrown back in this cage when I just got out of it, you know? I was slapping the head off him. Let's, let's, let's be real here. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to keep it as is. Have my training camp in pressure, preparation for that frame, for that larger man, and that's it. Um, I wanted no, no changes, so. If someone's saying they're the baddest badass in the room, I believe that I'll be the first one to step up and beg to differ. I don't think there was a dance partner, me and Nate. We're just two people that wanted to fight, and that was it. You're not gonna just run me over, and tell me I'm a little bitch, and get my face, because I'm a fighter first. I'll slap the out of you, get in my face like how Otto was getting punked out. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. He should have killed me when he had the chance because now I'm back and I'm going to kill you and your whole f***ing team. You and them bitch kids. I train always hard to kill. He already dead from the last time. This is a new guy. So if killer can't be killed again, USA, motherfuckers. Expecting a fight. Tune in. We're going we're gonna to get it down. Gonna get down. But hey, you should have brought an arm. should have brought everybody because it's going to be down if we see you. The second fight between the notorious Irishman managed to exceed the expectations and amassed 1,650,000 PPV buys. It was the biggest event for the world's best league after the anniversary UFC 200. McGregor worked on his cardio during the camp and it was enough to go the full distance and not three but five rounds in the conclusion of which the judges gave him a majority decision victory. Either way, it was already an enormous success for a regular Stocktonian who didn't get that much attention throughout his entire career for all of his fights combined. I didn't think for a second that I lost at the end of the fight. Um, I thought I won the, the fight. It was incredible. It was a great fight. Um, it, it was everything that I thought it would be. I, I, I never saw it going five rounds, so though. I didn't, I didn't think that fight would go five. It did. Both guys are incredibly tough. Um, warriors, man, those guys are unbelievable. Recognition 
happy that the UFC is finally recognizing the love and, and support that guy has from the fans too because for whatever reason they were so high on Conor McGregor and all these other people they didn't see one yeah. of the reasons why the Conor fight was so big was because of Nate Diaz mm -hmm. Nate Diaz is a f star yeah, he when is. he when they put his face on the screen yeah. for the Pettis fight I mean the arena erupted it was chaos yeah. they went nuts it's true Thanks to the two biggest fights in the history of the UFC, our hero finally got noticed as he was put on a deserved pedestal of glory. Only after two scraps with the notorious one, people began to find interest in who Nate is and what he represents. For example, the MMA fans found an interesting fact about him. The Stocktonian had been doing triathlons for many years, which helped him to keep his wild endurance that made him famous in the first place. Diaz's home streets also got a portion of fame in a universally renowned city of California. However, the main question in the community after the outcome of the second fight with Connor, was it going to be a trilogy? And if yes, when? And actually, Nate wasn't really in a hurry to come back. Are we not going to see him in the main promotion anymore? And all because this time, Diaz disappeared from the radars for a rather long time. At the moment, I'm not, I'm not, uh... I'm not logged into anything or talking about anything, but um, I'm sure that I, I, I have some ideas for this year. Yeah, so, that's what's up, man. So when they... it's time to pull the trigger, oh yeah, and if I can tell them what's going down, I'll, I'll bust it out. But but I want to see how this fight this weekend go and yeah. see how some stuff goes. We won't pull the cat by the tail and say that Nate Diaz did not retire, and that's evident. Though he made a lot of money, his fighting spirit together with a young age couldn't let him live peacefully without competition. In other words, three years later, in August of 2019, at UFC 241, the Stockton's impudent son returned to fight a former champion, Anthony Pettis. The champion of my weight class, 55 and 70. 55's Khabib. Okay. 70's Kamaru Usman. Okay. I mean, it'd be I, nice. I, I feel like I'm just better and cooler than those guys. <laughs> the hell do I want to fight them for? Pettis is cooler than both of them, fight fight wise. You know? Oh man, a perfect perfect fight for me. You know, I, you know me and Nate, we we've had beef and drama for a long time. So um, just something that that was supposed to happen a long time ago, and it's finally it's finally happening, and at a comfortable weight class for both of us. So it's gonna be a scrap. We won't forget to mention that at an early stage of his career, Diaz was poking at Showtime to get some attention as nobody really cared about him at the time. Did Pettis just say something to you? Yeah, he didn't say shit. Put his head down and look down, but he's walking by like he's tight. And you know what? Call him a bitch right here because he thinks he's tight. He's been talking that shit on the internet and like, want to act like you don't see me when he's here, but don't act like you want to fight or act tight if you're not going to do shit. And now, after all these years, when Pettis was not that relevant in the media anymore, he himself was glad to clash with the Stocktonian who in contrast was getting more popular and famous. Um, I see my hand getting raised, man. I feel like Nate Diaz had three years off. Um, he's, I'm not impressed with what he's done. I mean, he beat McGregor, other than that, who has he beat? So um, I've been fighting, the, I've been on the front line since I came into sport. I'm fighting the best in the world, right, always. Right. You guys are both cool. Know. No, we're not cool. Like me and, me and Nate are not cool. I mean, like we never had any kind of relationship other than him throwing his middle fingers up at me. So right. you do that to me, then I, I'm assuming we have a problem. But now after this unfolds, there's no real problem, man. I feel like he's just, he was jealous of where I was at in my career, or he was at in his career. He got the McGregor fight, got his little income up, got his little followers up, and now he's content. Like, who's next? I want to do whatever I'm told. I'm like, I'm on, I'm a, from from day one. It's gonna stay the same too until I'm 100 years old. I'm the dawn of all this. Shit. Anybody gonna step in this room and say they they're, they're the ass whipper? I beg to differ. It would seem that a three-year-long layoff doesn't go without consequences, but in reality, a well-rested and fit Stocktonian came out and completely destroyed Showtime. Against all expectations and speculations that continued to crowd around Diaz's name, he was just going out making history. Nate got the victory by a unanimous decision, but let's be honest, in a span of these 15 minutes, he was close to scoring a stoppage on multiple occasions. By the way, it couldn't go without another call-out in the post-fight speech. The reason I was off is because everybody sucked. There was nobody to fight. But with this, uh, with this belt, I want to defend it against uh, 
Jorge Masvidal had a good last fight. Good last fight. All respect to the man, but there ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. There ain't nobody who does it right but me and him. So I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. Yeah, I felt him a little up and down, but he had a little comebacks where that was... I feel like if I would have took it down a little bit and then been more like picking it apart, but then I also felt like 15 minute fight isn't enough time for that, so. The decision to challenge Jorge Masvidal wasn't spontaneous at all. Diaz is a very smart businessman and he knows whose name to call to stay relevant and deliver a spectacle that can make him a lot of money. By that time, Gamebred reinvented himself and ascended like Phoenix in the eyes of MMA fans and got deserved fame after a sensational 5 second knockout over Ben Askren. Coming back with an impressive victory after a layoff, the Stocktonian gangster looked like the best matchup for the new star in the company. As a result, both parties did not take too long to reach agreement and the fight took place three months later at UFC 244. I'm coming to fight with everything I got, you know, so I'm going to give it my all, man, whatever it takes, you know. Um, he's, a different, he's a different caliber than the guys that you mentioned, and I've seen him pull through some tough situations and win those decisions, so I got, uh, I got, I got whatever it takes, man. You know, if it's a buffet, or it's, it's whatever it is, man, I'm, I'm here for it, you know. Right here. We're fighting for so the, the best, best motherfucker in the game, Bell. That's right. I live like that, like by that, by that code. Like we gotta, we gotta, you know, strong survive type. Of like I don't need no, 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 no chance. And then when they do that, I'm like, you're fucking my whole shit. What I believe in, and it's all, it's making me leave, lose sleep at night. So I'm like, you know what? This is, this is, uh, this is war, and this ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sleeping. The UFC sleeping. Jorge Masvidal sleeping. I'm like, how about all of you guys? Ain't no one sleeping. Woo woo woo. Yo, fights up. No, not at all. I'm, I'm here to do the same thing that's damaged us. Turn the off button on him, make him short circuit, put him in outer over because uh, it's, it's really for me and my family, my legacy. And the only way to separate myself from the pack is to send these people to another dimension. You know, there's only one way to do that. Yeah. Well, I knew that. I knew personally that I knew before he had his last fight and a long time ago. I'm like, where everybody says that, who was a fan that support? Because if I was a fan that support, I would want to see. Me versus Masvidal, all Masvidal versus my brother. Because everybody else is weak, whack. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, there's some good, there's some great fighters out there, and a lot of good, good attitude and good, good personality, all that. But um, as far as just straight up fighting, what we all tuned in for initially, anyways, is for fight wars. Like, I, I figure if anyone had, was paying close enough attention, the best fight that you can imagine would probably be me and him. Let's also talk a bit about the BMF title. If some of you don't know, initially it was introduced specifically for Nate himself, but the fight didn't go the way many people expected it to. And not because Masvidal looked better for the most part of the night, but because of the reason to stop the fight. As we know, after three rounds, the fight was stopped by a doctor who examined the Stocktonian and did not let him continue due to two big cuts around his eye. Thus, it was a TKO loss. No, nothing. Pissed off. What are you pissed about? Did you see the fight how it went? I saw. I just feel like I, I had a non-stop fight camp. I think I, I could have used um, a little more time. My eye was already shit from my last fight. Um, and anyways, you sneeze on me, I bleed. You know what I'm saying? Blood don't hurt, just in case nobody knows. After such a controversial stoppage, in a regular sense, as we know that deep cuts that bleed all over the place is a big deal, Diaz didn't know if he was going to return. He was really considering retirement, as he was already doing quite well outside the octagon. But let's be honest, Nate wouldn't be himself if he ended his career on such a pale note. It would be one thing if he got flatlined and completely destroyed in the fight with Jorge, not being able to continue because of the obvious reasons. If he died on the battlefield like a true warrior. But when the decision to keep fighting is made for you, it's totally different. But nobody knew who he could fight if he came back in the professional sport. Many speculated on the trilogy with Conor McGregor, but it wasn't really clear with him. At first, he dispatched a veteran in Cowboy in 40 seconds in the winter of 2020, 
and then he disappeared for a year without any evident reasons. So, the community limited itself to guesses and theories on this matter. Until in April of 2021, all of a sudden, UFC announced shocking news. In June at UFC 263, a mature Stocktonian was going to fight a young and rising prospect with a winning streak reaching his prime and overall a number three ranked welterweight Leon Edwards. I tried to take take the person out the whole the whole fight whenever I can uh, uh, because the distance I, I always prep to get to uh, be ready for that too and um, we'll see what happens. Um, I think uh, Nate is Nate. You know what you see is what you get. I can't I can't see Nate now. Um, at, at his age and how he, how he compete over his over his career to come and be like a total different fire, you know. I think he is he is what you see in his last fight, the last five fights. You probably what you're going to see in, in this fight, you know. So he's going to come forward, try to push the pace, and um, or rely on you getting tired and then um, climb on top of you, you know. So I've, 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 I'm in preparation for everything that he's going to bring to the table, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I was waiting for this whole uh, the whole world to speed back up. I wasn't really waiting. I was just trying to get on a good card where everything was happening again with his full crowds, and uh, it was time to go. And he's the one who's winning and doing doing a good job. And uh, uh, he's got an impressive little record and career going on. So, so I'm, I'm pumped to fight in a worthy opponent, and that's what I'm here for. I'm coming to win. So, um, I think skill set wise, I am leaps above him, you know. And I, I will show that come Saturday night. I know he says it's kill or be killed, and I'm here to kill. So. Yeah, he knows how to win, he knows how to win and get it done, so uh, it's going to be a serious, not serious fight, and uh, got to kill him, motherfucker. Yeah, I think that's, mate, yes, you know, that's, every, that's every fight. <laughs> if it doesn't bleed, then it's not a fight, you know, so he's definitely bleeding in this fight, you know. In the actual fight, the legendary veteran of the world's best league showed his toughness and that he doesn't change with age. Despite a clear advantage on the side of British Rocky, Diaz managed to survive all five rounds of a one-sided beatdown and then almost pulled off the greatest upset in the fighting sports industry. As he caught Edward's chin with a signature 1-2 in the last minute, Stockton's impotent son preferred to taunt a young prospect instead of finishing him. That's why the fans love him. No words needed. I gotta cut and train. I do good too. I don't be cutting like everybody be saying all the time. It happens in the five fights, but uh, I'm ready for that. Uh, but I got cut in training. That's why we had to push the fight back for a month. And um, I kind of lost all all motivation to train and work out hard and all that. So I kind of just lingered around for a month, re uh, getting ready for war like that. And uh, in the end of the day, I felt like. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He he won or whatever, but I feel like I feel like I'm the better fighter still, regardless. And I feel like uh, in a real fight in the real world, that's what, that fight's a wrap. So uh, yeah, he was he was sleepwalking. <laughs> Finale. Hey Diaz, let's go, brother. Let's go. I'm gonna get some smoke, bro. Uh, I'm gonna give him some shot, bro. And. Uh, Let's see who is the real gangster. Closer to the second half of 2022, Stockton's impudent son had only one fight left on his contract in the UFC. As we found out prior, our hero was not planning on extending it. I feel like the UFC, uh, um, it's kind of limited for me, you know, and I wanted to reach higher, higher uh, goals, higher objectives, and do bigger stuff than this and uh, under the UFC umbrella it's like you, you're like I said you're limited you only go so far and, and uh, like I said it's only halftime show uh, it's time to blow past everybody here and the organization and uh, even if it involves in me staying in or getting out I'm gonna do something bigger than I've ever done as soon as this is done Bigger than this, bigger than whatever in the past also. Based on that, the company openly decided to throw a renowned veteran under a rising star in the face of Chechen wolf Hamzat Chemaev. 
By that time, the prospect was taking off and needed a big name which could boost his media exposure and move him further. I'm real gangster here. I <laughs> eat the gangster for breakfast. That's why I'm here. By September, strange things started happening in the fighting community. UFC announced that on September the 10th, there would be UFC 279 event with a rather exciting card. Tony Ferguson, who got knocked out badly only four months ago, will fight a young and fresh welterweight prospect Li Jingliang in the co-main event. The headliners would be Nate Diaz and Hamza Chemaev. Besides that, Kevin Holland was also going to be on the card fighting his opponent at a catchweight. Okay, like you never know what can happen in somebody's life and in training, right? The show must go on. Maybe there wasn't a better option to save the event. Okay, let's assume that. Remember when I f Donald Cerrone uh, here on New Year's mm -hmm. and uh, who fought on uh, the main event with Brock Lesnar and uh, and uh, that was a Brock Lesnar fight. Brock Lesnar, Lesnar and Overeem, I think. Uh, yeah, for sure. So I just, uh, I just fucking, I gave up on preparing. I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> Beat me. At first, the public began to ask questions why the world's best league threw uninterested Diaz under the bus of a prime undefeated Chechen and a potential future champion. Then this happens closer to the set date. Yeah, this ain't gonna happen. I apologize, everybody. I am in very weird. Water's here. This has never happened in the history of this company. So, um, trust me when I tell you this is the right decision not to do this press conference right now. And The UFC 279 press conference is cancelled due to a mass backstage brawl. All these guys come out there together. It would have been bad. Uh, the Diaz camp showed up with 57 people. Hamzat's team had 30-something people. And then you had multiple guys going on back here. It was crazy. It was absolutely nuts back here. Did you guys hear it out there? No, the loud. The music was yeah. so loud we couldn't. It was loud back here. I thought I thought everybody could hear it out there. Anyway, I, I didn't think it was going to be a shocker when I walked out there. But oh um, uh, yeah. Were there yeah. any? Dana was, was it? Like just However, with all the details about the chaos Dana White was talking about, it begged the question: Where is at least one picture or a 10-second video of that exact brawl? Didn't anyone out of 100 people film the action? There's more. 178 and a half, the official weight for Hamzat Shimaev. I, they, they stopped that shit. I don't know. I want to move a canteen that shit. Hey, this is Chechnya, motherfucker. Shut it up, guys. And I'll fuck you boy up. I'm fucking backstage as well. Suddenly, Hamzat Shimaev was not even close to making weight. The media shares the information that Diaz refuses to fight Boz, who has a huge weight advantage. UFC does a shuffle and everything falls in its place. Kevin Holland, the American himself, goes against Shemaev at a catch weight, while the Stocktonian shares the cage with Tony Ferguson in the main event. It's all a mess. It's irritating. I trained for arms. I don't, I don't even know how to fight this guy. I'm going to watch the video tonight, but it don't matter anyway because I train for everybody always anyway. I don't train for fights anymore. I just train to fight everybody, always ready for war. So uh, He's an athlete, like I said, and I respect what they do. So I respect what I do as well. So, I mean, I'm going to go out there and get that victory. Uh, Tony's been around a long time. We should have fought a long time ago. Khabib's ass was afraid of him, just like this ass mother was afraid of me yesterday. We punked his ass in the back here, and now he don't make, know how to make way. You know what I'm saying? You guys already know what it is. Real G's come from California, America, mother The fight of two UFC veterans was lackluster. It was more of a sparring session or an exhibition performance for the crowd. Four slow rounds, guillotine in the middle of the round and a submission victory for Nate, leaving the promotion with a win as he should being a star of the fighting sport. I felt like the uh, later it was going to get, the better it was going to get. And, um... started working out for me. I have no plans on being back in the UFC. I, or I have no plans in, on not being back in the UFC. Did I say that? Aftermath. I would love to fight him for the third time, man. I've, I've wanted to the whole time. And uh, they put Connor on a big pedestal and he made a lot of 
Open for a lot of different people in the fight game. Also, the UFC had the team they did. They made all that happen, and um, there's no doubt in my mind that me and him are going to finish that off, and that's, that's for sure my, one of my biggest goals. After a stoppage victory in the last fight inside the organization, there were rumors in the media about the Stocktonian's debut on the boxing scene. As we already said, Diaz is a good businessman and he knows how to make profit from what's happening around. Looking at McGregor's example, he also wanted to try himself in a more financially beneficial industry. The perfect opponent happened to be a YouTuber who by that time already shared the ring with some MMA fighters, including former UFC champions. Soon, rumors stopped being rumors and we found out that Nate was going to fight Jake Paul on August the 5th of 2023. I've always wanted to box and uh, like I said, I, I feel like I was a pro boxer the whole time. Every fight I fight in MMA, I was training just like any boxer trained for a boxing match, sparring pros, pros, hitting mitts, uh, running and doing all the, all the boxing workouts. and more sparring than probably anybody and uh and that was just a part of the time the rest of the time i had to do all the other shit so yeah i'm i'm, I'm glad i get to come here and uh and uh showcase my skills in boxing yesterday jake told me that he considers you a bully that he's going to bully the bully on saturday can i get your response to that statement <laughs> i think he's a bully why do you think he's a bully? Well, I'm not a f***ing bully, he's a f***ing bully. <laughs> Jake, why is he a bully? He throws water bottles at innocent people, chokes them out in the streets, talks a lot of shit. And I'm gonna bully the bully, yeah. Boo, boo yourselves, boo yourselves, boo yourselves. Boo yourselves. I'm gonna bully the bully. This little guy that you guys love over here, he's gonna be dead on Saturday night. I'm gonna finish his career. Yeah, boo yourselves, peasants. Oh. He says he's gonna finish your career on Saturday, Nate. Bully. <laughs> the clash between the veteran and the young and rising athlete went the full distance and ended with a unanimous decision victory in favor of Jake Paul. But even despite that, people enjoyed the show the Stocktonian gave them. And that's what matters the most. Dude, we're gonna have to uh, uh, co promote with Real Fight Inc. I don't wanna do that. But uh, I wasn't trying to, but I had the single leg in the first and the choke in the ninth, so <laughs> I already won that battle. For sure, my uh, fight mentality, he did, he did, so I knew that already. He was just not. That wasn't a full contact fight, so. Epilogue. You heard me, I talked to you years ago. I like, I want a money fight, good fights. I'm not gonna fight these guys. I like, wanna fight those signers, no one knew him. Mm -hmm. I had no motivation in that. I want fights that people want to see not fights because it's time for you to fight because that's what we think like no it's not i've been fighting enough i want to fight that's worth my wild worth his wild let's get our fight on i don't care if it's all good or not all good when we fight we're gonna fight 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 for real fight he thinks he's the ninja i'm the ninja ninja gaiden american ninja real mother ninja this ninja martial artist right here i started that that came from stockton with us me and my team that's how Nate Diaz is, simple like an apple pie, but honest, sincere and unshakable warrior who courageously fights for his life and his close ones to have a better future. He was raised on the stern streets of Stockton and it left a clear mark on him. For the bigger part of his career, he was in the shadow of his older brother Nick, but as time passed, people began to love and accept him. His signature one too is true art that shook up the world together with his opponent's chins many, many times. Nate Diaz is an MMA superstar who achieved everything he has right now with blood and sweat. He and Nick will always be remembered by the MMA fans as pioneers of the new era who enriched the sport like nobody else. Regardless of his age, who he is up against, Nate Diaz will always fight till the end despite damage, exhaustion, and other factors. That's why we love him. Right now, he is close to 40, and there are no hints at the Stocktonian's retirement. The trilogy with the notorious Irishman is quite possible, or another bout in boxing. We'll see. And that's it for today. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Share your thoughts on one of the toughest fighters in the history of UFC. 
hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. See you soon. I think that's enough, man. It's good enough for the day. I'm over it.